Welcome fellow humans! Today I'm going to talk about land sickness, or as it's formally called, and forgive my pronunciation here, mal de débarquement. It looks French and I never studied French. I'm going to call it land sickness because that's a lot easier to say. Anyway, what happened to me was I went on a cruise. It was lovely, I had a great time. It was a one-week cruise and I handled it fairly well. I don't tend to have that many problems with motion sickness, although I've been getting more and more as I get older, and at this point I do get queasy even in cars, but I was okay on the ship. And then the cruise ended, and as I was kind of expecting that I'd be a little unsteady after the cruise, I knew that that was kind of a thing, but I still felt the rocking of the ship for days. It just kept going, and then it lasted about a week. And that kind of motion sicknessy, still feeling the fake motion of the ship when it's not there, is commonly referred to as land sickness, as I discovered when I went to look up what on earth is going on with me. Most cases of this go away pretty quickly. Mine lasted about a week, and in fact, I had the same thing happen the next time I went on a cruise again. I got about a week of land sickness afterward. There are some cases that last a really long time. It can go on for months or even years, and then it becomes a very serious medical problem. Um, there are a bunch of medical treatments that are possible for it, although not as much research has been done into it as would be ideal because it is pretty rare to have it last for a really, really long time. Some of the treatments are things like medications, but there was a very interesting study where they were trying to treat a case of land sickness that had gone on for, I believe, over a year and was really incapacitating and damaging this person's life, where they studied what motions their vestibular system seemed to be having from the land sickness by measuring their motions and how they were moving, and then created a room that had motion directly opposite to that to try to make their brain kind of counter the land sickness, which I think is fascinating. This also seems extremely difficult to do and like a treatment plan that would not be accessible to most people, whereas things like medications are obviously going to be a lot easier to acquire. But as stated, most people will, if they get land sickness, have it go away on its own without too much time passing anyway. I try to enjoy it and view it as kind of a little bit of extra cruising kind of time, especially when I was just lying in bed and enjoying the phantom swaying of the not ship. So it wasn't too bad in my case. I did look up risk factors for land sickness, and when I read them I was like, oh, it is me. I guess that's why I have it. So risk factors um, were being older, being like in your 40s, and that was when I got my first case of land sickness, uh, being assigned female at birth, which I was, uh, being prone to migraines, although I've seen mixed info on that online, but it looks like being prone to migraines makes you more prone to land sickness, and I am extremely prone to migraines. So while it's not a very common condition, I was just the right sort of person to get to experience it. And most likely, if I were to go on another cruise, I can expect about another week of land sickness afterward. But as long as it stays mild, that's not too bad. Anyway, that's my story, and if you liked it, please click like, and if you know someone who might find it interesting, then please share it. If you'd like more similar content, then of course subscribe. But most of all, if you have any questions or similar experiences or so forth, I would love to read your comments. Thank you.